by the end of this video, you are going to completely rethink the way that you approach fishing, especially when it comes to big or bigger bass. Most of us are not even giving ourselves a fair shot to catch the best bass in the lake. Well, before we really get into the details, and I've got four of them I wanna share with you, we need to define what big bass is. For those of you down here, it's way different than for those of you here. And then there are a bazillion factors on each body of water that directly impact how big fish are going to get. So maybe for your body of water, a 10 pounder is a big fish. Or maybe you're like me on my home lake where if you catch a five pounder, that's an absolute giant. I know it's not fair. And besides my own observations and experiences, I'm going to be pulling some information from the man himself, Doug Hannon, the Bass Professor. As a matter of fact, I'm going to link the video that I'm referring to down below so you can check it out if you want to. Number one is we need to kind of dismiss the myth that bass are low light feeders only. This is definitely not true for big bass. Yes, low light is a great time to fish and a lot of that is because it hides our mistakes. Often with low light conditions, especially during the day, you've got some sort of wind, you know, you maybe have a, a storm coming through and those situations hide our mistakes as anglers and it just makes it a lot easier for us to cover water and to get bites from fish that are out roaming around and taking advantage of their prey, most often being up in the water column during those times. And one of the things that leads me right into point number two is why we have to not only think about low light is because the full color spectrum or contrast, whatever you want to refer to, is not visible in low light. We know that as light gets dimmer, it's much harder to decipher colors. Well, vision is extremely important for bass. They are a very visual predator. Even in water that has some color to it, that sight is really, really important. And of course, when you have better light, that color of what they can see is easier to find for them. And then also, not only is that color spectrum most available to them when that sun is high up in the sky, they can also see farther. And that is so important for a predator to be able to see at a distance. And we know that big bass are the biggest bass in your lake. They're very good predators. That's how they got that way. That's how they got to be big fish. And number three, point number three here is just fascinating. As a matter of fact, several months ago, a viewer had uh, commented on a video and asked me this particular question to, that I'm going to go over. And he was talking about bass using shade because when they look out into the brightly lit water, they can see better and they are less likely to be seen by their prey. Well, this is something that we experience as humans all the time. I mean, think about it. If you are in the dark, looking into a brightly lit situation, you can see it so much better than it was reversed. We need to think about presenting those lures in a manner that take advantage of the situation. Yes, of course, we are gonna you know, flip and pitch stuff into those shady patches. We do it all the time. But we also wanna take a moment to present the lure in that sun right on that shade line, often a horizontal type of a presentation coming through where that predator in that shady area can really get a good look at it. And then number four, when it comes to my own personal experiences, the best bass that I have caught and been with people that they've caught have all been in the middle of the day. Matter of fact, take a look at this photo right here. And yes, you can go ahead and laugh. I captured this from a video. Uh, we were actually filming a television show and we were fishing down in central Illinois and my cameraman caught this fish when we were taking a break and I held it up so he could film it with the camera and, and get it in the television show. But take a look at the background here. I mean, this is basically a bluebird day. There's barely any wisps of clouds in the sky. Um, it's clearly a super bright part of the day. And this fish was caught, he caught it on a crankbait, going right around a riprap corner coming into a bridge. 
biggest fish that he has ever caught. I know it is his PB. Now the second situation I want to talk about is the biggest smallmouth I had ever caught. It was for pre-fishing for a tournament on Lake Erie out of Buffalo, New York, and it was a bluebird day. The water was slick calm, which is pretty rare on Lake Erie, and this was over 20 years ago, and of course our phones then didn't have the cameras and stuff now. And I don't have a photo of it, but what I do have is this bump board right here that I had in the boat with me. And I was curious about the length, so I put the fish on the bump board, and the tail of this particular bass was off the edge of that board. So I don't know what that translates to as far as weight, but it was by far the biggest smallmouth that I had ever caught. Big fish are the most successful predators in their body of water. And, and to give ourselves the best chance to catch them, we need to take advantage of those situations, those environmental conditions that make them good at what they do, which is getting big. And hey, if you want to watch a video that talks about what just about all bass do when they are sensing pressure, when there is a lot of activity on their body of water, go ahead and check this one out right here and make sure that you go out and encourage someone today. You never know how you might just change their life. For the Bass Fishing Life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.